This video is going to show you how to linearize data using Google Sheets with an example. So some scientists are arguing over how to mine their P's and Q's. They are looking for a good predictor of how many P's they have when they have 36 Q's. So after the excitement led to a dead end, they conduct a mysterious experiment and they get these results. So we'll kind of rev it up a little bit and see how many P's we have when we have 22,500 Q's. Not just 36, but let's just go for the whole wad here. So here are their results. And I've got them in an X and Y column. So the X column is the independent variable, and the Y is the dependent variable. And in fact, the X isn't just X, it's the label Q, and the Y is the label P. So these are P's and Q's. All right, so to begin with, I'm going to switch and go to Google Drive. So here I am in Google Drive, and I'm all ready to go. And what I'm going to do is click on New and create a spreadsheet. So here's my spreadsheet. I'm all ready to go. Now all I need to do is enter the data. Just like that, I've got the data entered. So here's the data from the previous screen. There are my X's and Y's, which are P's and Q's. First thing I want to do, since I'm linearizing the data, is I want to see what kind of function this might map out to be. So I'm going to highlight, I mean, in other words, I'm going to click on 3A, that's row 3, column A, you can see it highlight there, and I'm going to hold down the shift key, and I'm going to click on the number in the lower right hand corner, 8. And that highlights everything. You could drag down, but I'm just going to hold down the shift key and click on the letter 8, or the number 8. Then I'm going to insert, and go to chart. For this to work, you need to make sure it's a scatter chart. So over here on the right hand side, it says setup, and it says scatter chart. There are lots of options, but I want to choose the scatter chart. So now when I look at this, it shows me P versus Q on my chart, and I can actually move it around. It's, I can resize it and drag it, so I'm going to drag it up just to get it kind of out of the way here. And if you look at the general shape and look at what kind of function that is, it looks like a square root function. So in other words, if I plot P versus the square root of Q, it should give me a linear graph, and that's what I'm going to do. So what I need to do is redo my data. So I'm going to look at P. And I'm going to go hold the shift key down. So I clicked it where the letter P was. And I hold the shift key down, click on the letter or the number eight. I will choose copy, control C or command C on a Mac. And then I'm going to paste it down below. Paste. So there it is pasted. I know you can't see the eight. There it is. Now for the Q, what I'm going to do is something a little bit different. Right here where it says next to the P, I'm going to type in sqrt, that's square root, parentheses, q, because that's what I'm going to put down here is the square root of q. To do that, I want it to do it automatically. I don't want to do all the calculations. This is a spreadsheet, and it's good at doing these calculations, so I'm going to make it do those calculations. So in this cell, which is row 14, column A, I'm going to type equals, and that means that this cell, row 14, column A, equals a math function, and the function I'm going to do is square root so I'm going to type in SQRT, because that's how you type in the square root function on a uh, spreadsheet. And then I'll hit the parentheses. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click all the way up at the top, row 4, column A, and it's the number 4. And I'll click on that. And you can see what types in the cell. It says SQRT A4. And so what the spreadsheet is thinking, I'm going to put a parentheses on the end. The spreadsheet's looking at this and saying, not A4, but it's actually thinking 10 squares up from where my equal sign is. And when I hit it, it'll give me the answer of the square root of 4. So that's great, but it's not thinking, again, A4 necessarily. It's thinking 10 squares up. So if I take this formula and I copy it, so I'm going to use my keyboard commands for Control-C to copy. I'll click down one below and hit Control-V or Command if you're on a Mac. And what it did was it typed in 4. In other words, the equation, I'll click on it, the equation says equals square root A5. Last time it was A4. So what it's thinking is 10 squares up from this square. It'll take that number and take the square root of it. So it's really not thinking A5, it's actually thinking 10 squares up. Now, I can do that, off, do that for all these squares, but there's kind of a shortcut that's really nice. So when I clicked on the box, it says 4. On the bottom right hand corner, there's another little itty bitty box right there in the corner. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that little blue box and drag it down. 
and what it's going to do is take the equation that I just had and it's going to repeat it. So as it repeats it keeps going up 10 blocks and taking the square root, 10 blocks and the square root. So that's the square root of Q. Nice and easy way to work with the data. Now I need to make a chart so I'll click on the square root of Q, hold the shift key and go down to the number 8 again and then I'll insert chart again make sure it's a scatter plot and here it is it's kind of covering up the other chart I'll move it around a little bit and it looks pretty linear now let's see how linear it is and what kind of relationship this is in other words an equation for this line to figure all this out again I'll let the computer do the hard work I'm gonna go over to where it says customize on the right hand side and then I'm gonna click on series see the third choice down says series and I'm going to go down, and you can see I can do all kinds of things. I can change the color of the dots, uh, how opaque they are, all kinds of stuff here. And then I'm going to go all the way down this section to where it says trend line. So I'll click on the trend line, and you can see it just popped up a line. In fact, I'll change the color of it to make it stand out and make it red. And I'll make it a little bit bigger even. So now it's a little bit bigger. So that's the trend line, and it matches up really, really well with my data. But how well does it match up? Well, if I click on down here, keep scrolling down, and it says show R squared. And that tells me how well it lines up. The closer R squared is to the number one, the better my data lines up. In fact, this data is perfect, because it says R squared equals one. But my goal is to find the relationship between P and Q, because that was my original question. So under the same section where it says label and custom, I'm going to make the custom label and I'm going to choose use equation. And you can see how my graph has changed. It has a dot next to P equals 0.5 times X plus zero. In other words, Y equals MX plus B. Y is equal to the letter P. The slope is 0.5 and X is whatever's down here on the horizontal axis, which is actually the square root of Q. Plus zero, that's the Y intercept. And R squared equals 1, so it's a great fit. It's rare that your data works out this well. So now I'm all set. I've got my equation and everything's, it, it's all set. It's all done for me. Let me scroll up for a second and go back to our question. It says, how many P's do you have when you have 22,500 Q's? So in square H1, I'm going to click there and I'm going to type equals. And I'm just going to do the math. Let it do the math for me. So my equation was 0.5x plus 0. So that's 0 0.5 times. And it's not just x, but I plotted the square root of q. So I'm going to type in sqrt, that's the spreadsheet function for square root, times the value, 22,500. No commas in this. It doesn't like the commas. It'll give you an error. When I hit return, it'll tell me the answer, 75. So when I have 22,500 Qs, I have 75 Ps. So that's how you mine your Ps and Qs. What if my function turned out something different, like 1 over x? Then I would type in equals 1 over whatever the cell was. That was A4, for example. What if the cell was, instead it was an inverse squared function? I would type equals 1 over x, use the caret to raise it to a power, and in here I want to put a 4. So it's pretty easy to work. It's a nice function and this can do a lot of data real quick.